everybody, I'm Karen Heller, founder and owner of Charisma LLC, and you are watching my very first vlog. And you're either watching it because you found an ad on Craigslist or you received some information or somebody walked up to you on the street and uh, mentioned something about the it factor, and you're here doing your research, doing your homework, which is great, I commend you for that. Or you are on my mailing list, Charisma is a career transition management company, and um, we have our Facebook page, our LinkedIn page, um, Pinterest, blah, 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 and uh, I spread the news about this vlog being available, and so you're checking up on that, maybe even getting additional information from the newsletter that I sent out on uh, the second day of summer about my experience as a talent scout. I'm doing this vlog because um, when I took the opportunity as a talent scout, I thought, I don't know if this is going to be an opportunity for me. I certainly wasn't interested in transitioning uh, in my career. I wanted to continue doing what I do and helping people land great jobs and helping them unveil their brilliance um, and helping them find work that's fulfilling. And I thought, I know a lot about doing that in corporate America, but I know very little about doing that in the, inter in the entertainment industry. And I wanted to know. If there's something I could find out about succeeding in the entertainment industry, and even just the entertainment industry in general, um, because I have had plenty of friends and contacts, and um, you know, maybe even my kids someday um, will be exploring opportunities in the, in the entertainment industry. And as a career coach and a resume writer, there's always something I can learn about a new industry that will even help me in the industries that I'm in. So. Um, I was on Craigslist one night trying to find some freelance copy editing, copy writing, proofreading positions um, to fill in some gaps in my business, and I found this ad. And this ad was intriguing to me, as, uh, as I'm sure it is to most people who find it, because it really makes this opportunity sound tremendous. Um, the ad actually was for a writer or blogger, not actually for a talent scout. Um, in recruiting, that is called the bait and switch. Um, but I did apply for that position. I wrote a very nice cover letter for that position. Um, I was excited about that position, and then when they got back to me and said it was a talent scout, um, I did have a little alarm go up and say, wait a second, this is something that was totally unethical in recruiting, to um, have a position posted, have people apply, and then find out that it's something different. But I thought it's probably their entry-level position. Um, and maybe there's promotional opportunities. And then I went on the website and I found out that they had tremendous opportunities um, in management and Upward available. And so I thought, okay, well, you know, I always wanted actually to find out what it took to be a talent scout or how you become a talent scout. It was certainly something that's very similar to recruiting, I thought. Um, so why not? And I went in for the interview, and of course, as everybody else probably does, I'm scoping the room to see what kind of caliber of, of talent I'm surrounded by as far as other prospective talent scouts. And I found a mixed bag, just like you'd probably expect from an ad on Craigslist. You get some good, you get some bad. Um, and I was very interested to see who they accepted uh, as a position, who they didn't. Um, I was interested to know that pretty much it was based on... Um, gut instincts or uh, nonverbal communication because they did an orientation on the company uh, which was very informative. They, um, the trainer Scott was very um, amiable and he seemed very genuine. Um, he didn't get too excited. Uh, it was kind of long um, and wordy and I didn't know how long I was going to be away and I had a babysitter at home. I didn't know how long it was going to be. They said an hour, so it was already going on an hour, and nobody interviewed me yet, so I was kind of, um, my mind was starting to go elsewhere. But after a while, they um, they ended the orientation. They had some movies on. The office was beautiful, um, which, which I found very calming and soothing. Um, it was a nice place to be. And um, then I found out that I got the thumbs up without having any interaction actually with the trainer. I mean there was again there's nonverbal cues and, and responses and not head nodding and paying attention and um, I was not you know checking my phone or doing inappropriate things during that um, but, um, but I was like okay you know so then I had to figure out um, well they wanted me to start training tomorrow and that's something that I found very similar to 
multi-level marketing, um, which I had done back in my youth. Um, and, and when you recognize something is similar to, to another experience, um, and, and you know because you've taken marketing webinars and courses and things like that, that part of um, capturing a sale is a sense of urgency and sign here right now. Um, but you also know logically that you should be able to say, I'm going to take some time and assess this. I have a family. I have things to consider. Um, but I also know that there's not a lot I do know about the entertainment industry and maybe this is just how it works. And, um, and I knew that if I wanted this opportunity and if I wanted to explore um, even for other people's sake what these growth opportunities were, that I had to act now and just make it work. And so that's what I did. I accepted the position. I started the next day training. I figured out how to get care for my kids since I'm the primary caregiver of my two daughters, an infant including one I nurse. Um, and, um, and I thought, I'm, I'm just going to make it work. And the first day, they had uh, some classroom training and then they, they put us out in the field. Um, and, uh, and I liked that we were out in the field the first day. I did. I thought we could have even probably gone out in the field a little sooner. Um, but what I found in the field was that it did feel like sales. Um, even though logically I knew what I was doing was actually just opening doors of opportunity for people, um, knowing that there was a quota, and it seemed like a big quota, and then I was asking questions about closing ratios and, and how many people do we have to scout to get people to come to the open call, and how many people do I have to get the open call to get the people who enroll. Um, the numbers seemed ridiculous to me. It seemed like, okay, maybe this isn't something that I can easily integrate into my everyday activities, but um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it work again. Um, if there's opportunities, and, and what I found pretty much from day one was that there were experiences that I had in recruiting and hiring and um, workflow management and human capital management that really could be valuable to them as they're expanding. While I was there in training for the first three days, I got um, two press releases that they were opening two new divisions, which was tremendous to me. I mean, I, one other thing that I thought that I could probably learn from this business was how to grow so fast. But then I realized that with uh, they're, they're experiencing some growing pains with growing so fast, and maybe, um, maybe it's better that um, that my company doesn't grow that fast. Although, after six years, I would have hoped to grow a little faster than I have grown. Um, but that's still all in the plans, still all in the works. And I think that, um, and I thought in some way this opportunity was going to help me do that. So I didn't really get a whole lot of insight, actually, as to um, how these opportunities came to them, but pretty much...